Now you might think you know how to play every single DPS hero, but there's always more that you can learn. Now in order to help along with this, we have put together one advanced tip for every single DPS hero. Now this could be a mechanical tip, movement tip, strategy tip, anything is on the table, but I guarantee by the very end, you're gonna learn at least one thing you didn't know. Speaking of guarantee, GameLeap.com is the best guarantee that you could find anywhere to improve. We've actually just got some emails with some people that have said, hey, we don't need your service anymore. We're already top 500. Thank you for everything you've done for us, but we're already there. So there's nothing more you could do for us. Well, that could be you before long. So definitely check it out in the links down below. But enough about that. Go grab yourself a Pop-Tart. Kick back, relax, and let's get started. Now kicking it off with our favorite cowgirl, Ash, the tip I got for you is a movement tip, and this has to do with crouch spamming. You see, specifically with Ash, for whatever reason, crouching doesn't dramatically change your head height. A lot of players, when trying to dodge Widow headshots or McCree or Ash headshots, they will spam crouch and sway left and right, but because of the lack of movement in Ash when she spams crouch, it is far better just to sway because adding a crouch in there doesn't make it so you could dodge headshots and it makes it a lot harder for you to aim so keep that in mind now in general for all movement tips in this video you should definitely go search up a third person workshop mode so you can see exactly how your body moves when you're moving left and right and crouching now we're going to the next DPS hero, we have Bastion. And one that you might have heard of already is the fact that you need to heal in between shots during your ultimate because it has no downside. Every time your ultimate, you need to fire, heal, fire, heal. It gives you more sustain and it doesn't reduce the total amount of shots. Now I know that one might be one you've already heard. So as a different strategical advanced tip, I'm gonna paint a picture of a scenario for you. So let's say you're playing Bastion on a payload, right? Usually that first fight, you'll win it for free because people are not expecting a Bastion. Now, as you get closer to that first objective, there's several things that you need to take note of. First off, everyone knows you're playing Bastion, so they're all going to be coming after you. Second off, a tendency of maps is as you get closer to the enemy's objective, there are multiple high ground vantage points on the defender's side where they can throw abilities down on you, whether that be nade, hook, or whatever. So often, the best thing that you could do is actually remove yourself from the cart and sit yourself in an alternate angle watching the cart. What this does is the enemy can't both contest you and the cart. You are the biggest threat, but if the enemies all come and commit to you, you're just going to cap the point. So this is a very powerful strategy and something you should definitely keep in mind. Now, the next character is Doomfist, and honestly, there's like over 9,000 advanced tips on Doomfist, and I can't even begin to cover them all, but let's run through the mechanics to bouncing, because a lot of people still don't understand exactly what makes a bounce, and how do you go at max height? Well, the first thing you need to understand is you can bounce on almost any rounded surface or elevation. So even a slight high ground, if you are punching into it and you press spacebar, entering a glide punch right before you touch it, you will still bounce off even a slight high ground elevation. Now, in order to gain max height, you're going to need to press that spacebar to transition to a glide punch the immediate millisecond before you touch the object. The later you press your spacebar or your jump key, the higher you will go. So timing is extremely important and the thing is this is harder to do with different sets of ping so you'll have doomfist players that will literally change their bounce timings for west versus each coast games and you should definitely be practicing bouncing on different ping to try to get a feel for it now the next character on the list is Echo. For Echo, you should always be pre-firing corners and even mind pre-firing corners. An Echo should always be farming for ultimate and pre-fire and spam in common places that people push through can not only get you kills but build up your ultimate so fast because Echo can just spam from long ranges and her minds come up so quickly so just do it over and over again. Now the next character on the list is Genji. You don't always need to right click dash. The thing is if you right click before your dash, there's actually a slight delay before you can right click again. So something you can actually do is dash and then hold right click and the second the dash ends it will instantly right click right out no delay and if you get the dash range perfect you can one tap an enemy. Now the next character that we have for you is Hanzo and honestly when enemies are left right crouch spamming which is something that people just automatically do against almost any type of fire even when they shouldn't the best thing that you could do is actually gauge the timing of their movement and line up a perfect headshot on Hanzo. 
This can be relatively easy if they build up a pattern of spamming left and right, and you just wait for the proper moment to let go of your arrow. This is what actually why stagger stepping and potentially even jumping as you go in to push a Hanzo is better than left right crouch spamming because good Hanzos will punish you. Another thing you should keep in mind is up against heroes like Tracer for example, you will find a window of time to kill them when you are most vulnerable. When you're weak and vulnerable, Tracers will often come in aggressively to finish you off and that is the perfect time to flip the matchup because remember one headshot on hanzo is the way to turn any single squishy matchup so as the enemy come in aggressively an opportunity will present itself and the next character that we have for you is junkrat now keep the tire please off the ground because it makes so much noise on the ground high level players will often rotate the tire like a madman when traveling through the air they will like swipe left right left right and the tires just going all over the place and then another key aspect about tire is keep in mind that you're like a hyper mobile super fragile hero how would you move if you were up against the Widow at 100 HP? You would never even peek her sightline. You need to be playing Tyre differently depending on the characters that can destroy Tyre, so definitely keep that in mind. Now the next character is McCree, and I know that flash headshots and just headshots in general are encouraged, but as you get to higher and higher and higher, McCrees can always hit head level and they can always follow up a flash with a headshot, but not all McCrees do because sometimes right click or fan the hammer is actually more powerful. A full right click will actually do more damage than a double headshot. Full six bullet right click from close range will do 300 damage. Now, yes, double headshot is more efficient on your ammo, but extra damage is extra damage, and sometimes you just have to finish off a target like Doom or May or a target with armor that can have a little bit of extra health. Now, it's also fine to right-click non-headshotable targets at that 20-meter range. You do tons more damage per second against shields, for example, and pros will often do this where they make sure that they hit every single right-click bullet, they correct the fire, but they will consistently right-click shield, right-click roll, right-click will roll and break shields incredibly quickly from that medium range. Now the next character on the list is Mei and the advanced tip that I have for you is the second that you freeze a target, if you ult them instantly, it will actually keep them perpetually frozen for that full duration as well. Now you might think that this is overkill, but it could be exceptionally good against large health targets like a monkey that's primal raging or nano Reinhardt because it will last longer than the nano duration and you will almost always secure a kill and you can favor trade your ultimate for the enemy's life plus their ultimate. Now the next character on the list is Farah, and when engaging close range on the ground, you can shift and correct the fire downwards at the same time. Now what I mean by this is you will instantly go up, but you're automatically looking down. Now this is a great strat against characters like McCree, because if they stun you, you will still go flying up vertically, which means they will miss their follow up, and also because you're so close to a target, sudden upwards movement will greatly mess up their crosshair placement, while you will already be correcting your fire downwards, because you know you're you're gonna go up instantly but they don't now the next character on the list is reaper and you should think about playing high ground almost like a movement ability because dropping from high to low ground is so quick where you can go straight from being safe to straight from dealing damage and with reaper's time to kill that action means that as you're falling you can get one shot as you land you get another shot the person's dead you wraith away that is the way to farm up kills incredibly quickly another thing that's actually really powerful is let's say a widow uses grapple right and instantly goes away you could insta follow her with teleport and then insta wraith post teleport so that you dodge her headshot then come out of wraith and just finish her off because she doesn't have any more movement abilities easy anti-widow tech but can also be done to characters like monkey for example that are just jumping away or whatever now the next character on the list is soldier and there's a lot of animation cancels on soldier that people don't know you can actually animation cancel reload as soon as the mag visibly shows that you're reloaded and you can cancel it with either sprint or helix or heal station and heal station can be animation canceled with tac visor so something that you could do would be reload animation cancel heal animation cancel tac visor which makes so that you have a full clip for your tac visor you have your heal on to protect you and give you more sustain and your tac visor activated so that's an animation cancel into an animation cancel into your ultimate so it's pretty cool now the next character on the list is sombra and this is something that fitzy does often shout out to fitzy but what he will often do is he will try to escape from targets he will actually jump up and throw his translocator go invisible and then at the same time cancel his translocate nine times out of ten enemies will chase the translocator you through but you just went stealthy and didn't even use it so you just fade away into the dark and you just sneaked away from the enemy. 
Now the next character on the list is Symmetra. And on Symmetra you can jiggle peek corners and do sim orb spam. This is incredibly effective because you don't peek for hardly any time at all. But you can just spam orbs through a corridor. And 140 damage full charm orb is nothing to scoff at. But for a super advanced tactic, I have seen Sinatra put up two teleporters. And they're pretty far away from each other. One further away, one closer to him. And what he does is he stands at the furthest away teleporter and fires a full charge orb at one target instantly teleports to the closer range teleporter and does a partial charge orb and hits them at the exact same time the first one will hit and the second one will hit at the exact same time on an insta shot the enemy opponent which is a crazy cool technique but maybe you can pull it off in your games if you do i definitely want to see it in the game leap discord so drop a link for us there now the next character on the list is Torb, and surprisingly, using your own Torb turret as cover is actually nutty. It can save you from things like High Noon, it can block a Reinhardt charge, a Roadhog hook, and much, much more. You need to sacrifice your Torb baby to the Overwatch gods so that you may live. Now the next character is Tracer, and this is another movement tip. You 100% want to be spamming left, right, and crouches against Widows, McCree's, Ashes, because it makes it a lot harder for you to get your Hazelnut shut off. Now that being said though, you don't want to spam left left and right too quickly because then essentially it's like you're not moving that much you need to find the flow and the way you find the flow is you look in a third person workshop and you look at how your body's moving the idea is to move your head as far as possible so that's very very difficult to track last but certainly not least is Widowmaker and the best tip I could have for you is just to be Carpe but for all of you that just can't turn to Carpe I'm gonna tell you the second best Widow tip which comes down to the fundamentals of Widow 1v1 it's all about crouch timing and the ability to fire at the exact perfect time to be lethal so you want to plant your feet and take a shot to as close as lethal percent as possible which would be 66 percent because that is just enough to one shot an enemy Widowmaker now the reason that this is important is because if I'm at 66% and I fire perfectly and you don't fire until 70% in a straight up matchup where we both charge at the same time, I'm going to hit your hazelnut first. Now let's say you're first to start zooming in and you miss that shot. What you need to be doing immediately next is trying to predict when the enemy is going to shoot based on an eternal clock of him going up to that 66% and you need to be crouching right then. The second you dodge his shot, then you're going to be charging up your shot and he is the one that is going to be trying to crouch. So that's the game behind it. It's a crouch plus 66% battle where you're essentially trying to time when the enemy is going to take his shot, dodge it and then be the one on the front foot charging up first so that you could take your shot back now this is just a small amount of advanced tips but if you want to see even more you need to look at in-depth VOD reviews over every single character and you can find all that at gameleaf.com we have in-depth advanced guides about every single character on the list so do yourself a favor and go check it out in the links down below anyways that's all I got for you today I'm coach Mills and until next time <laughs>